Hi, I'm Emily F, Manager of Communications at the Caribou Regional District. This is our video update for today, August the 11th. Um, we're going to get a bit of a weather update as well as a look uh, at some of the fires around the Caribou. Um, and uh, Natasha, how about you start, introduce yourself and tell us about the weather. Sure, so I'm Natasha Rosetsky, a Fire Information Officer based here in Williams Lake. Uh, we'll start today just with a bit of an overview of the weather because that is something that's going to be uh, coming into play here over the weekend. Uh, so today we do have a risk of, of isolated thunder showers in the west. Um, and we still are seeing the hot temperatures we've been seeing over the last few days. Um, and it, again, we're, we're seeing hotter in the east um, and, and also hotter where this, the smoke clears. Mm -hmm. Generally today we're going to see winds a little bit more uh, than we have in the past few days. So, you know, it's hard to say a rule for the whole fire center, but generally we're, we're kind of expecting 10 to 15, gusting 25. And we have seen that uh, at some of, our, some of our stations, particularly sort of in the, uh, the line from Risky Creek to Baldface. Uh, we're experiencing uh, particularly, I, I would say, hot, dry and windy conditions there. We'll, we'll touch back on that later. Um, and the winds here today are expected to continue tonight, which is something we don't always see in the Caribou. Mm -hmm. So tomorrow is kind of the, the big day for us uh, here in the Caribou Fire Centre in terms of weather. So like Mike was, was speaking about before he left, we are expecting a cold front to begin, to begin moving through the fire centre uh, beginning Saturday night. It's going to be moving in from the west and we expect it to be passing through Williams Lake at around noon. Uh, and then leaving the fire centre by mid-Sunday. So essentially what this means is that we are going to see increased winds throughout the Caribou Fire Centre as the cold front passes through and there is also a risk of lightning uh, basically across the Caribou Fire Centre with the cold front. Um, some of the lightning risk will persist uh, overnight Saturday in some areas. The, the winds are, are expected to gust to around 40 which is not as high as we've seen with some of the previous cold fronts that have come through the Caribou Fire Centre and that's due to the fact that this is expected to be a, a more slower moving cold front than some of the ones we've seen uh, here early, well, than the one we saw earlier in, in July. The other thing to note with the cold front is that uh, we are expecting a, a band of showers to move through the fire center with the cold front, but it's going to be very variable in terms of amounts and in terms of the locations where we, we do see rain. So, as a general rule, we're expecting to see some, some sort of decent amounts uh, in the eastern parts of the fire center. We'll, we'll see if we do get that. But unfortunately in the west, we aren't expecting any substantial rain. Uh, you know, humidity, relative humidity will increase, but in terms of rain helping the, the efforts on the fires out there, it's, it's not going to be a, a whole lot of help. The other thing to note about the, the cold front is that we're also going to see wind direction shifts with the cold front. So generally what we've been seeing in the Caribou Fire Center lately is, is winds coming from the southeast predominantly. And the issue with the, the cold front is that when it passes through, we're going to see generally a shift to the west-northwest. Um, this plays into our fire suppression efforts because uh, it can push fires into new areas of fuel that they haven't had access to before because of the different wind direction. So it can uh, cause growth in new directions. And it also can be dangerous for people that are working on fire suppression because when, of course, when the wind comes uh, and shifts like that, it pushes, can push the fire into areas where people are working. So we're really watching for the wind shifts. Uh, we are going to be prioritizing the safety of our first responders and ensuring they're not in, in a bad spot when the wind shifts come through. Once we get through the cold fronts, uh, like I said, it's going to be it's expected to leave the fire center sort of midday Sunday. So once we're past that, we're going to be looking at a, a westerly flow with variable winds. Um, we are forecasting so far uh, scattered showers in the east uh, later in the week, as well as uh, temperatures uh, near seasonal or just below. So that's going to be a change from what we've seen with this hot weather uh, over the past little while. So in terms of our, our fire suppression efforts, the outlook past Sunday is looking somewhat favorable. It's, it's not going to be a, a season ending rain event by any means, but we are going to see cooler temperatures than we have been seeing as well as higher relative humidities, which will also help um, fire suppression efforts. The wind is still uh, uncertain and like I said, it's going to be variable, so that will play into it. Um, but I think our, our focus right now is, is getting through the weekend and, and seeing what it looks like after that. 
Thanks, Natasha. And uh, tying in with that, uh, as usual, the Caribou Regional District works very closely with the BC Wildfire Service to evaluate um, what areas are safe for residents to be in and um, for evacuation orders and alerts. So um, at this point in time, the Caribou Regional District is not considering lifting any evacuation orders over the weekend because of the, the weather conditions that Natasha just talked about. So. Um, Starting Monday and going forward in the week, we will be reassessing where evacuation orders are, where areas, which areas are safe for residents to go back, but that uh, those orders won't be changing through the weekend. Um, Natasha, also, uh, could you give us just a bit of a sense of some of the fires around the Caribou? Sure, so maybe we'll just start here in the Williams Lake area. Um, so there, there hasn't been a lot of change on, on fires around Williams Lake in the, the past few days, which is, is good news. We're just sort of continuing efforts um, on fires in the Williams Lake area. So specifically Wildwood, uh, still sitting at around 12,972 hectares. We are seeing pockets of fuel, of unburnt fuel, well within the perimeter of the fire, that are, uh, the fire is finding the, that unburnt fuel and smoke uh, can be seen in this fire. We do want to say that uh, you know so far it's just been areas well within the perimeter, so uh, there's there's no need to to panic too much about that. The area in the northeast of this fire continues to be the hottest, um, so our focus is on that as well as um, hot spot suppression, machine guard construction, and sort of consolidating some of the previously built um, machine lines, just working to make those a little bit more organized and effective. Uh, next, I'll talk a little bit about Spoken Lake. So this fire is uh, still sitting at 3,523 hectares. And our focus on this fire is, is on the northern half of the fire as well as the southeast flank of the fire. Um, and this is, our efforts here are, are really focused um, in an effort to decrease the risk to the public. I know that there's been, um, I know that people want to get home, but at this time, uh, the, the fire activity um, and, and essentially the, the uncontained um, perimeters on this fire, we aren't we aren't feeling like it's safe for people to return home. We are working on uh, securing the perimeter and working on uh, reinforcing containment lines. But at this time, it's just it's not the time for people to be entering back into the area. It's still uh, it's still too much of an active fire. Um, I will also say that smoke is, is visible in on this fire on the northeast corner. But again, it, it is within the perimeter that the smoke is being seen. So don't panic if you see smoke. Um, the contingent there, we are also uh, on this fire. Uh, we have a contingency guard in place to the east. Just if something were to change, we would have some uh, some protection on that that flank of the fire. Uh, moving to White Lake, so again, we've seen no growth in the past uh, several days on this fire. Uh, an aerial scan was completed uh, on the east side of the fire. So uh, we we conduct aerial scans when we want to basically see where there's uh, remaining areas of heat on the fire. It's a really good tool um, that we can use to sort of work more efficiently in that when we get the results back from the scan, it'll, we can tell our firefighters exactly where to go on the fire with GPS locations and they'll be able to just go directly to those areas and work those hot spots instead of patrolling around and trying to find them themselves. Uh, so crews are working on extinguishing the, the areas found by the, the scan essentially. And then on the west side of the Fraser River on this fire, uh, hot spots uh, have been observed on the, the southwestern flank and crews are essentially continuing efforts in this area to, to work on some of those. The, the Prouton Lake Fire, previously known as the UBC uh, Research Forest Fire, uh, was, it is at 365 hectares. Uh, the fire does continue to be active in the south and east, but so far the fire uh, has been held within the original contingency line, so some good news there. Um, and a second contingency, contingency line is under construction just uh, to give a bit more of a, a safety barrier there. And I can move on to other areas of the character sure. if that works for you. Yeah, okay. please. Uh, we'll, we'll move way out west now with a, a fire that's uh, started in the, in the Coastal Fire Center and unfortunately moved to the Caribou Fire Center. Uh, the Precipice Fire is sitting at 6,049 hectares and uh, uh, Emily will speak a little bit about the, the evacuation orders um, due to that fire. Essentially we are uh, concerned with the western movement of that fire and, and feel it's not safe for, for residents to be in the area. Um, direct ground attack does continue to be limited in some areas on this fire due to essentially road access and, and fire behavior. As well, they've had issues there with uh, poor visibility limiting uh, the aircraft support that they can use. So that's been another uh, thing challenge they're, they're working through. Um, fire guard construction is continuing south of Kaplan Mountain Road and also south of the, the Precipice Valley. 
Um, I'll move now into talking about fires uh, in the sort of northwest of the, the fire center, so um, Tawtree and, and Bizdeco River. But I'll just I'll preface this by saying that we we did take a look at the weather stations out there before I, I came and, and chatted with you guys, and we are seeing some pretty incredible, um, essentially conditions out there in terms of how dry it is mm -hmm. and how uh, our um, how some of our our numbers such things as the fine fuel moisture codes, how easy it is for fires to start and spread, as well as the initial spread index, spread index, another measure of fire spread. The numbers out there are extremely high, so we are seeing um, increased fire behavior, um, growth, and essentially unstable and, and volatile conditions on, on fires in the, the western uh, part of the fire center, um, Tawtree and Bazika River fires. We do anticipate the, the weather conditions in that area to uh, stay volatile this evening and into the weekend, and we'll be able to sort of reassess what's going on in those areas when we we get a look at things, but for now, I'll say that the, the Tachi fire, um, the most recent uh, estimate we have of size is 92,062 hectares. Um, the focus has been on securing the, the east and northeastern perimeters in preparation of the, the forecast wind shift that we're gonna see this weekend with the cold front. So again, priorities for us are protecting life and property in the area, as well as keeping major uh, roadways open. And uh, the, cr the crews have made excellent progress so far with containment line construction on the, the north and east perimeters. Um, certainly the weather conditions this weekend will, will challenge that uh, progress. Crews have, can, have, can, crews have secured some of the lines uh, with controlled burning and they will continue to do controlled burning when the conditions permit, mm -hmm. but as a general statement, with the, the weather and wind conditions we're expecting this weekend, it's going to be extremely, we're going to be extremely cautious with this because controlled burning needs to be done in situations where it, it can be controlled and if there's um, going to be issues with that with the weather, then unfortunately it means we can't burn. So it's, it's one of the best tactics we have to fight fires like these, but it's only useful under under the right site and weather conditions. So we'll see if they are able to burn in this area this weekend. Uh, and then another note for the Tachi fire, crews are also uh, working on a, a secondary fuel break in the Northeast Division using an existing road. So again, just provide a little bit more um, of a contingency if, uh, if the fire is to move in that area. Next, moving to the uh, Bazika River fire, where uh, 54,602 hectares is the most recent size estimate we have. And the, the biggest challenge on this fire has been, unfortunately, um, visibility impeding aircraft operations. So this uh, has been kind of hampering them for the last um, couple of days. I know that uh, as the winds pick up, it will move smoke out of the area, which will help aircraft fly. Unfortunately, it will also, it will also uh, increase fire behavior. So it's a, a bit of a trade-off. Um, the fire had not previously been active in the past few days, but they were expecting that to change today, and, and given the, con the weather conditions and site conditions out there, I expect that they have seen quite a pickup in, in fire behavior. Um, efforts on this fire are focused on building guard on the 3900 and 4200 roads to protect the community of Nazco. It is a priority for this, this fire and the, the crews working there. Um, and also a priority is maintaining structure protection operations in, in the area. Thanks, Natasha. And uh, as a result of these fires, um, the Precipice Fire, as a result of that yesterday, uh, we the CRD issued an evacuation order for Anaheim, Nimple Lake, and Charlotte Lake areas um, due to concerns, uh, like she mentioned, about the fire's growth and uh, threatening the Highway 20 corridor, um, as well as for the Tawtree and Bazico River fires. As a result of that today, the Caribou Regional District also issued an evacuation order for um, an area, it was an expanded order for an area southwest of Quinnell, as well as some areas east of Tide Town, um, all the way to the western border of the Caribou Regional District. And the reason for the, the large uh, scale of that evacuation order is mainly due to road access issues so that people in that area um, can get out safely. So, um, And any other last fires that you wanted to touch on? Yeah, I will. And like you said, sometimes we don't just, well, we never just assess um, whether an evacuation order or alert should be recommended due to the, the direct danger from the fire. It is really important to, to keep in mind the, the egress routes out of the fire. So, it, you know, it doesn't always mean that 
you know, your home is, is threatened by a fire necessarily at the moment, but we just want to make sure that everyone can get out of the area in a, a safe manner uh, with ideally plenty of time to do so. Mm -hmm. um, I'll just, I'll briefly touch on the, the Quinault Lake area um, because I know it's, uh, fires in that area have unfortunately caused evacuation orders in the area as well. Um, we are uh, continuing to monitor fires in the Quinault Lakes area and are assessing uh, structure protection needs in the area. Our priorities in the Quinault Lakes area are protecting life and safety as well as uh, conducting structure protection. We are seeing vigorous fire behavior uh, on all fires in the Quinault Lake area um, and again this is due to the extreme um, conditions we're seeing here in the Caribou Fire Centre. The, the entire, basically the entire Caribou Fire Centre is seeing extreme fire danger ratings uh, and that coupled with the, the low relative humidity and the, the high temperatures um, that we don't always see in the east that we are, are really driving the, the fire behavior in this area. Um, and if we do get the, the winds out there that we expect to this week, and unfortunately that will continue. Um, so we are, we are monitoring, we are working with structure protection, and we are working to, to keep people safe and protect values in the area. And uh, as a result of a couple of those fires out in the Quinnell Lakes area, the Caribou Regional District issued uh, two evacuation orders for that area, one for an area along the northwest side of Quinnell Lake and another uh, for the Mayford Lake area, which is just about 10 kilometers uh, northwest of the north arm of Quinnell Lake. Um, so I think the overall message here, which we heard from Natasha, is just the there is some unexpected weather over the weekend. Um, for people who are on evacuation order, uh, we will be reassessing that um, once this weather pattern passes uh, after the weekend. And uh, for people who are on evacuation alert, um, make sure that you're prepared. Um, and as always, uh, be safe and have a great weekend.